Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're taking a look at Windows Whistler build 2257 on the $1 Windows 98 PC. Are you dying? <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep my composure for at least a little bit. Are you recording? Yes. Oh, damn it. <laughs> G'day folks. Today, we're taking a look at Windows Whistler build 2257, which was compiled on the 10th of August, 2000. Let's get into it. Whistler build 2257 is a beta one build of Windows XP. And as I mentioned, it was compiled on the 10th of August, 2000. And this build came to the community or rather the internet as the personal SKU, but not the professional SKU. I believe there was both SKUs, but I believe the one that we have access to in today's video is the personal edition. Now, obviously there were builds before 2257, quite a number of them in fact, but we're really not gonna be taking a look at each and every single one inside of this video, obviously, because they're not too terribly interesting. There was build 2202, which did identify itself as Windows 2000 still, with some minor modifications. But otherwise, it was very similar to that of Windows 2000, and for that matter, you couldn't really boot it off of a CD. You had to do an upgrade, as far as I can tell, or you had to do some modifications out of the box to make it work. The next build worth talking about is build 2211, and that's uh, referred to itself as Windows Whistler 2001. And it had some changes to the base of Windows 2000, such as having the control panel of Windows Millennium Edition. It had a slightly different version of Internet Explorer, known as 5.6. It had the welcome screen of Neptune. It had a new help center. And in addition to the help center, there was a mention of Neptune inside of the help center. But otherwise, it really wasn't too different from Windows 2000, just with those minor tweaks. It even still said Windows 2000 on the boot screen. Another build that we could technically take a look at, but we're not going to in this video, is build 2223, which again, uh, it actually mentions itself as Windows Whistler 2001, but again, you know, it's whatever. I was really hoping to take a look at this build in this video, but it has more problems than it's really worth trying to deal with for today's video, at least, because there is two big things that were worth wanting to talk about. The watercolor theme, which at the time was known as the business theme, which was a bit broken in this build, as well as the out-of-box experience, which was also kind of sort of slightly broken. But we'll be taking a look at this uh, out-of-box experience in this video, hopefully, if everything actually goes to plan. We'll have to see. But it was introduced in build 2223, as far as we know. The predecessor to build 2257 is 2250, which I've already taken a look at on my channel if you want to go and watch that video. There'll be a card up in the top right-hand corner of your screen. So let's talk about some of the other things that were within build 2257, at least from the page that I have pulled up as far as that stuff is concerned. Again, this is the Windows personal version of build 2257, but there were some notable modifications, such as the boot screen being changed to, say, Windows codename or Microsoft codename Whistler rather than, you know, Windows codename Whistler. But it still has the Windows 2000 logo and design. The setup process has the Windows Millennium Edition design, but it mentions Whistler. And for that matter, like I mentioned, it, it does have an out-of-box experience if you were to do this one method I'm about to try in this video. It has a welcome screen that was very similar to that of build 2250, and it has a redesigned personal start menu, which we hope to take a look at, as well as some cool things with the theme. So I don't know, we'll have to see if uh, that actually functions because it's known to have problems. So anyways, let's go ahead and take the CD, which I have here, a totally legit copy, and we're gonna throw it into the optical drive of the computer we're using in today's video, which is this Dell Dimension XPS T500. Get in there, you. It is a slot one Pentium 3 at 500 megahertz with 512 megs of RAM and an ATI Rage 128 Pro graphics card. So we're gonna see if this works. I don't know, let's find out. I did try this earlier just to make sure that it would actually recognize the install of Windows and would let me upgrade. Otherwise I wouldn't be proceeding with this. So as you can see, this is the auto run. 
which as you can see still mentions Windows 2000, but the header was changed to say Whistler, as you can see. But everything else still makes ties to Windows 2000. So yes, we would like to upgrade. And here's the setup process, which as you can see, again, takes a lot of cues from that of Windows Millennium Edition, but it looks different because it mentions Whistler and it's obviously got a different setup. The setup is the Windows Dynamic Setup, and you can either do an Advanced or an Express. We're just going to do the Express for this video. Interestingly, you can press the Next button, but that's probably not intended to be pressed, so we're just going to press the Express button. We do accept the License Agreement. And here we go. It's already going. Windows just got better. Windows Whistler helps you get the most out of your computer by making it faster and easier, more entertaining, and more reliable. Wow, that went fast. You can probably read all the ticker tapes on the screen, but it's whatever. Interesting, there's no time prediction. It just mentions that the installation will complete in 90 minutes or less. Check out those really low uh, color depth pictures. What is with that person's smile? Dear God, that looks creepy. All right, so here we have an upgrade report. Interesting. Reliability and quality are key design goals of Windows 2000. Blah, 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 blah. Wonder what this has in it. Backup files found. Set up found files on your computer. There appear to be a backup of part of Windows 98. Set up removes Windows 98 from your computer. Yeah, that's fine, because we're just going to delete all this because I don't really need it on here anyway. So, that's fine. Oh, well, that was fun. Okay, here we go. Now we're actually doing an installation file copy process. It must have been, like, doing the upgrade report in the background it just didn't say because I, I must have done the automatic thing which does it for me or something who knows but anyways it looks like we will actually have a successful upgrade which is good uh, this computer is from 1998 so i would expect it to work just fine but of course you never really know so anyways it's either from 98 or 99 it's one of the two it's close enough that it'll work fine with whistler all the hardware in here worked natively on I think both 2000 and XP, so it should be fine. So there we go. There's the reboot. There's my ugly face for the uh, camera because glossy screens. <laughs> now, in case anybody's wondering, when you're installing this build, you need to have the date on your computer set back to the 10th of August 2000. Otherwise, you might attract a time bomb to work. So, just a bit of a heads up. So here we have Windows Whistler set up, as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and launch that. This should just start at the text-based version of setup, but maybe it'll actually go into that interactive portion, as you can see by the uh, Windows Whistler setup progress bar down at the bottom. Because it could go either way, depending on if you did the clean install or the upgrade. I think it looks like we're going to go in the graphical portion, which would make sense because we're on a personal version of Windows. And here we go. This is unique to Whistler. This loading logo down here, with the classic Windows flag, and it cycles through the colors. That honestly looks really cool. So this is going to take quite a while. The ticker tapes are going to basically be the same, just without the imagery up in the top right-hand corner of the screen. There's no estimated time so i can't tell you how long this is going to take but i will come back when this reboots or there's something else that happens that's interesting that cd drive is making some curious sounds as it's seeking across the disc all right we're about to reboot progress bar is just about filled up what i'm hoping happens is we reboot and we go into a like a, a true color depth setup i don't know we'll find out here pretty shortly i'll be back i'm gonna connect to my laptop fun i just love vga when it gets cut off on the side like that and you can't auto it over because that's just vga in a nutshell and it's great guys you should probably invest more into vga all right, there's starting Windows. Oh, there we go. Microsoft Codename Whistler. There's the boot screen. Sorry for the glare on the on the camera because this glossy screen. Yeah, you can probably see it a little better. Okay, 
Well, I was figuring there was going to be higher color depth because I'm doing an upgrade, but I guess not, which is fine because I wasn't expecting it to. So here we go. Microsoft Codename Whistler setup. Notice how it tries to load like it's Windows 2000 setup or whatever have you, but it's got the Windows Millennium styling in the background. So it should just go through the normal motions of setup at the moment. There, I'll get my copyright strike for the day. There we go. So it looks like we're just going to do business as normal. They did not change that logo from Windows 2000 setup, so yeah. So I'm gonna let this do its thing and I'll be right back because this might take a few minutes as it says. So as the setup has been progressing, as you can notice, now it's moved over to the sidebar, very similar to how Windows XP's progress bar was. Now it's gone back to delivering the ticker tapes, which as you can see, still mentioned Windows Whistler. They're basically identical to that of Windows Millennium Edition otherwise, basically. So not too much to report here other than that. So I'll probably come back once something else interesting happens. All right, guys, Windows 2000 is now installed. I thought I installed Whistler. Oh, wait, it says so on the title bar. <gasps> I'm funny. Well, you're the smart one. You're on Windows 98. So are you. Was on Windows 98. Now I'm on the all-new Windows Whistler. Yeah, I'm going to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade my Whistler and make it better than you are. So, fuck Nah. You didn't install all the multimedia features, so. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. Windows Whistler has them all. Including Windows Movie Maker. Including Windows Movie Maker. You gotta try that now. I don't have a Firewire card in this computer. Put one in then. I don't have one. How do you not have one? How do you not have one when you know I have one? Because Firewire, mate. Oh crap, we got high color depth already. Dang! I wonder if the out-of-box experience is going to work, because that's what I tried this for. So let's see what happens. Yeah, what if it doesn't work? They lied! Just kidding. <laughs> I do have speakers plugged in, so let me try turning them up here to so see if we can hear anything. I don't think it was audio. I don't know. If we hear anything, well, then we're about to find out. Just ask Rob. Let's spoil it for you. Oh! Oh, crap. It's actually doing something. Yeah. Ooh! It's glitched on the right-hand side, but it's playing... Well, no sound, but we got it. It played the little intro video, at least. Welcome, Jordan Woolery. Thank you for purchasing a computer with Microsoft Windows Whistler. During the next few minutes, you will be guided through a few steps to enable the internet and multimedia capabilities of this computer. And it looks very Windows Millennium-like, but that's to be expected. Interesting, there's a 4 next to that text, so I almost wondered if that's supposed to be where, like, an arrow was supposed to go, but it doesn't work. I think that 4 kind of falls around everything, so I don't know. We'll see. Let's try to go through this and let's see what happens. No, I don't want to register at this time because it's already skipped through the hardware and the legal requirements. Do you want to get on the internet? Uh, do not configure the internet at this time because I don't have a connection. Congratulations, you are now ready to use Microsoft Windows Whistler. Here's a summary of your activity. You did not register your copy of Windows Codename Whistler with Microsoft. Your computer is not configured for internet access. When you are ready, click Finish to begin working with Windows Whistler. I mean, to be fair, at least they put in the part where it's registered, right? Right. So right now I got the we had the Windows 2000 style of startup. Oh, excuse me, banner. So now we need to set a password for all new Windows 2000 accounts. Okay. So. It says Windows 2000 on the on this box here for asking me to put in a password. Probably because they hadn't changed that part of the setup yet. So I'm just going to throw in something. That should do it. Okay. So we don't have the welcome screen out of the box, but I didn't expect that to be the case. So let's go ahead and log in here. All right, so we got the Microsoft Sound.Wave, which is 
also in Windows 2000. It looks like they use that as the default login sound and not the Windows Millennium or 2000 startup sounds. That I was not expecting, but okay. Oh, I got the color change. So now it's got the Windows XP style shade of blue. And here we are at the desktop. Perfect. So it looks like the upgrade was successful. It looks like it's actually applied the professional theme out of the box. So that's cool. Let's see if it's got the new start menu. It's supposed to be enabled by default. And it is. Well, there we go. All right. So let's go ahead and go to my computer and hit properties real quick. Here we are. We got Windows 2000. It is version 5.01.2257, of course. Doesn't say that we're on a Pentium 3, but we are on a Pentium 3 because, of course, it's broken. So here you can see there is the professional theme, or otherwise later known as watercolor. Probably one of the most coveted themes of all these pre-release versions of Windows, or at least it seems that way. All right, so I'll go ahead and head into the properties here. Oh, now that looks good. <clears throat> I hadn't figured that page out yet, so obviously everything's all over the place and broken, but that's to be expected. It did actually pick up my graphics card driver, ATI Technologies Rage 128 Pro. So that at least works. Actually, I wonder, do all the wallpapers have the exact same, everything as Windows 2000? I would assume that they do. I'm gonna start scrolling through these things. So let's see. Oh, that's that looks good on the side. All right, so it's got all the same patterns as before, all the ones from 98 at least. Yeah, it looks like it's just all the ones, they like combined the Windows 98 wallpapers with some of the ones from 2000, or maybe they're all the, it looks like they're all combined together. They just have one great big uh, thing here. So it's got all the wallpapers from the desktop themes combined together with all the Windows 2000 ones, including the active desktop thing, which is kind of interesting. So we're gonna do the watercolor background because that looks pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and start launching stuff here. Um, I guess the first thing we can try is Internet Explorer. And take a look at the version of that. It shows us 5.5, but it's not supposed to be 5.5. As you can see, it's supposed to be 5.6, as they mentioned. So that's that. You might have noticed that when there's an inactive window in the watercolor theme, it turns the border of the window red, which looks really cool. I wonder what else was supposed to be in here. Oh, interesting. We have a duplicate disk defragmenter. I wonder what the deal is with that. Oh, well, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. Um, interesting. There's a link to, that says welcome to Windows. Let's try that. Oh, looks like it was removed. Darn. All right. Interesting that WinRAR is actually still on here. Or not. Windows is not able to process the application binding information. Please refer to your system event log. All right, so WinRAR is oofed, but I expected that to be the case. I believe one thing that was supposed to be inside of this is the internet games, but that's currently not on here, at least that I can tell. So there's that. There's all the internet related goodies. And there's some of the accessibility features. Let's take a trip into uh, control panel here. Take a look at that. As you can see, it's got the grouping very similar to that of Windows XP. In fact, I think all these categories are the same as Windows XP. They have the preliminary icons though, which look definitely from 2000. So we can start exploring some of these things here. Um, obviously they kept the old Internet Explorer browse sound. They haven't put the Windows XP one in, which makes sense. Interesting, they have the old desktop themes thing in there. Apparently my Tweak UI transferred over, that's pretty funny. So I think Credential Manager is a Windows 2000 style thing. I think that's probably what that was from anyway. And you can switch it to Classic Control Panel, which is pretty interesting. I wonder if they still have the Windows 2000 sound in here. Oh yeah, this was also another thing that was changed from the standard Windows sound panel from Windows 98. It's supposed to have this like Windows logo and a different layout because in Windows XP, of course, this all changed to represent like speaker settings and all that stuff. Looks like that's some of that is preliminarily here. Let's see if we still have like the Windows 
2,000 sound effects. Oh, wait. It says stop. It doesn't actually have the logo. It just says stop. <laughs> That's a nice bug. Yeah, it should have the... Yeah, it has all the sound effects from uh, Windows 2000. So that makes sense. It's got the other sound schemes in there too, but it's probably all transferred over from Windows 98, to be honest. I think this desktop themes... Oh, it actually still works. Holy crap, that's actually kind of impressive. Um, I doubt it's going to do anything, though. It actually makes me wonder if this themes thing in here actually works. I don't think so. Yeah, it just shows one theme. I believe the other appearance things are just the classic themes, which obviously all of these were still in uh, Windows XP when it debuted. Do we have the other color scheme? No, we don't. It just has the one color scheme. So I guess that makes sense then. Obviously, the leaked Luna, like the default or whatever theme it was called in later builds, I think 2410 and 2419 had them, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, let's see. I think there's not a whole heck of a lot else that we can actually take a look at because I think most of these things are broken because I upgraded from an updated copy of Windows 98, so a lot of things are probably not going to work. But we can at least try uh, pinball here, see if that functions. I gotta turn the volume down because they're gonna get blasted with pinball sound, which I know I like, but don't need to be blowing my speakers out. Okay, so that seems to work, which I expected it to. All right, uh, I think we can actually take a look at Outlook Express real quick, see if that's actually got our version number change. I think it should uh, get out of here. Get out of here. Oh yeah, you can see there's issues with rendering the window, so the the uh, borders are all glitched out. Yep, Outlook Express 5.6 is also inside of this build. As you can see, it cleared up the window there. So, oh, and it has a thing that this is a known bug where it glitches the desktop like it's doing. So that's a known problem. But yeah, I think. Interesting, my documents was changed to my files. That obviously didn't change for very long until it went back to my documents. So there's that. I wonder if it's still got the sample picture from like Windows 2000 and ME. Or at least ME, I know that was an ME. Yep, still got that one at least. Is there any music in this? It's got a sample playlist. Oh. Oh yeah, this must just be all of the... Yeah, these are just all the default uh, playlists, I think, from Windows Media Player 9, if I'm not mistaken. That's where that's from. But you can see the layout of the Windows Explorer carries over a lot of the stuff that you saw in Windows XP into this build. Uh, voice crack there. So your task panes on the side, other places, details, all that stuff looks very similar to that of Windows XP. Obviously, this visual style on the top with the header showing what directory you're in did not stick around, but the sidebar sure did. So that much is for sure still here. So let's see if we can get the welcome screen to work. So let's go under user accounts. And as you can see, there's only the one account. Obviously, the administrator account is hidden because in Windows XP, that's how it was by default. So it's the same thing here. You can take a look at this delightfully retro looking user accounts pane. But we're going to go ahead and create a new account just for the sake of this video. We're just going to call it uh, user, whatever, it doesn't matter. We're going to make it the limited account because why not? And there we go. So now we should be able to change log on and log off options. And we want to use the welcome page for fast and easy log on. I don't believe fast user switching was implemented yet inside of this build. I think it's just the welcome screen. So you have to log off anytime you want to change users. So let's try that now. And there you go. There is the new welcome screen. And as you can see, the computer name is up on the top left. So it is derived from that of Windows Neptune or Microsoft codename Neptune rather. But it looks very similar to that of build 2250 with the Windows logo off to the left-hand side. However, I believe, unlike some of the prior builds of Whistler, if you click on a user account to log in, uh, it should allow you to actually see that you're logging in within this welcome screen interface. It shouldn't go out to the Windows 2000-style dialogs before logging in. 
I don't know why I was typing that password. That was the wrong one. And I believe if you had a password hint set, it would also have a question mark there, but I don't. So obviously that's not the case. I do like the way that it kind of highlights the user account that you selected. That looks pretty cool. And indeed, yep, it tells you applying your personal settings and logging in within the welcome screen interface. So that actually seems to work. And that's pretty cool. So very nice. And of course, because I left the control panel open when I logged out, it reopened it automatically. Very cool. What's the speech thing? Oh, wow. We actually have Microsoft Sam in here. I wonder if that works. Uh, it doesn't appear like it is. Dang, that sucks. Um, is the audio output set correctly? Yeah, it is set correctly on the Yamaha PCI audio on this computer, which is the onboard sound. Interesting. Uh, I can't do that. Um, hmm. just wonder if I change it from the default, will it work? Dang it, it doesn't work, guys. So, no Microsoft Sam preview for this video, at least. That sucks. And then here is a screensaver. This is the logon screensaver first seen or at least derived from Windows 2000, except the banner now says codename Whistler. Prior builds would actually say Whistler 2001, but this one just says Whistler. And of course, in this version of the Whistler operating system, all the older screensavers are still here, including the ones that use OpenGL. So I think the 3D maze should still work. And indeed, it actually still does. But holy mother of God, it is going. Ooh, this is fast. Then again, this has the Rage 128 Pro, which for this screensaver is quite a high-performance GPU. All right, that's enough of that. So we know OpenGL is working. That's pretty cool. I think one thing I was also going to try was under effects. It should have clear text. This was something that was introduced in a prior build, the smooth edges of screen fonts toggle. And we should be able to change it to, say, clear type and apply it. And yeah, it actually works. So if I hover over items that used to not have clear type enabled, it now changes the text elements to clear type, including inside of the start menu. So that actually seems to be working pretty well. I almost wonder if we go into here and if we actually change the start menu back to the classic start menu. Interesting. Look at this image. You can tell that this might have been the design that they were intending to use in the final release. You can kind of see a bit of a leak of the Luna theme. It's got like that rounded start button design, but it's got the classic Windows logo. It's all stylized. It actually looks really doggone cool. I almost wonder if that's ever been leaked before or what the deal might have possibly been. But actually, it looks really doggone cool. And even the system tray, like, I don't know if you can really see it all that well, but man, that actually looks really cool. So I almost wonder... If they were developing this professional theme with the intent of actually making it the final theme, and that was what the taskbar and the start button, and for that matter, the start menu, was supposed to look like. You know, that actually really gets my creative juices flowing. I wonder if that's hidden in any of these leaked builds. That would actually be really interesting. Somebody chime in the comments below and let me know if that's actually ever been the case. But of course, if we go back to the classic start menu, we get a completely different screenshot with the classic start menu which of course there it is and as you can see it says codename whistler on the side all the icons are basically that of windows 2000 except for the turn off computer little logo there that is changed but otherwise all the other icons are practically the exact same as 2000 so there you go i wonder what's inside of this panel so this doesn't have one of those scroll boxes like xp did this just has hard-coded on or off checks for all the different categories, which is pretty interesting. That's still pretty fascinating though. I almost wonder if that actually was ever implemented because that start button actually looks really damn cool. Not gonna lie. So of course, here we are, as you can see, Whistler uh, version 5.1 build 2257, and it expires on the 8th of November, 2000. So this was a 90 day evaluation. So there you have it guys. There was a bit of a look at Windows Codename Whistler Build 2257, the personal edition. And really, yeah, it's it's quite an interesting little look at the operating system that eventually became Windows XP. And I know it probably wasn't the most in-depth, but I hope that in future videos showing Whistler, we can actually take a look at some of the more interesting builds. But 
you know, it is what it is. So with that having been said, if you liked this video, even in its state of whatever it was, give it a like. And the other button, if you didn't like it, works as well. If you'd like to see more videos just like this one, there is a red button down below this that says subscribe. You should probably click on it and then you'll be notified of new videos from my channel when they come out. So I'm going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching once again. Catch y'all in the next video.